All right, welcome back to my channel, True Crime Fans. I'm your host, Tim Solberg, and today we are going to cover a little bit of the Alec Murdaugh murders. Now, I'm not going to do a recap for you of the murder, but I will put this up here. It shows a little bit of the sentencing, so let's watch this clip together. All right, Mr. Murdaugh, I sentence you to the State Department of Corrections on each of the murder indictments in the murder of your wife, Maggie Murdaugh, I sentence you for a term of the rest of your natural life for the murder of Paul Murdaugh, whom you probably love so much. I sentence you to prison for murdering him for the rest of your natural life. Those sentences will run consecutive. All right. So the question that I have for you today is, and I would love to have your input, right, is what was Alec Murdoch thinking? Now, I know that's a tough question. Obviously, I'm not a psychologist, so everything in this video is going to be purely of opinion. But I'm just curious, after watching what I watched with the judge really providing feedback to Alec Murdaugh, I couldn't help but find myself thinking, you know, when did Alec Murdaugh really decide to commit this crime, right? So I want to show you another clip, and I've got probably four or five clips that we're going to go through, but I thought this was a very important one from the judge, really talking about his experience being on the bench and never getting a confession from a killer that basically comes out with when did they make that decision? Like, when did it click for Alec Murdaugh? or any, any other murderers, for that fact, that they were going to commit that crime. So let's watch this together. I would not uh, expect a confession of any kind. In fact, as I've presided over murder cases over the past 22 years, I have yet to find a defendant who could go there who could go back to that moment in time when they decided to pull the trigger or to otherwise murder someone. I have not been able to get anyone, any defendant, even those who have confessed to being guilty, to go back and explain to me what happened at that moment in time when they opted to pull the trigger when they opted to commit the most heinous crime known to man. All right, so based off of that clip, I just want you to think, I want to deep dive into the mind of Alec Murdoch, and I know that's hard to do, and it's all opinion, and it's all opinion-based, but did he make that decision to kill his family way back a few months before, or even years before, um, after Paul had uh, gotten to that boat accident? You know, did that have something to do with it? Or was it something that, you know, maybe that day there was a, a tremendous amount of stress? We're going to see that in one of the clips where the judge kind of talks about that, and then he he makes the decision to do it there. Um, I think that it was definitely first degree murder because to shoot them with two separate guns, there's got to be some planning on that. Or I could be wrong. What do you think? Was there two people? Did he have some help? Maybe Buster had something to do with this, right? That hasn't been brought up. Um, but obviously there's some online sleuths that have some really good things out there or some really good theories. I want to hear from you. What do you think? Um, in my opinion, I think he's had this plan for quite some time. The pressure built up, and then that day became the day. So let's uh, let's watch this clip. Uh, oh, what tangle web we weave. What did you mean by that? I meant when I lied, I continue to lie. <clears throat> and the question is, when will it end? When will it end? And it, it's ended already for the jury because they've concluded that you continue to lie and lie throughout your testimony. This one, I think the judge really comes out with his passion and his charisma where he starts talking about 
um, you know, the interweb of lies. And he really asked Alec Murdoch, like, when is it going to stop? So my question to you is, we know that he had a lot of lies while he was up on the stand. He admitted to a lot of those lies. Do you think that there's ever going to be a truth that's going to come out of this case and or previous killers? Do they ever find a truth even when they're spending time in jail or maybe when there's no more appeals and they know that all hope has been lost? So the question I have before this clip is does Alec Murdoch himself really believe that he's innocent, right? And I know that he has some appeals, but basically the jury has come back and found him guilty. So now the burden of proof is going to lie on Alec Murdoch through his appeals. But when you watch him here in this clip, I want to know what your thoughts are. Does he truly believe that he's innocent and he had nothing to do with this? Or do you think that he's guilty and he's still continuing to lie? And I tell you again, I respect this court, but I'm innocent. I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my wife, Maggie, and I would never, under any circumstances, hurt my son, Paul Paul. Now, this next clip, I think, is very important on this because it really talks about the amount of pressure that Alec Murdaugh was under, not only for his fraud cases, but some of the other things that have went on um, throughout the murder uh, trials and some of the other things that we've heard about from his housekeeper to uh, Stephen Smith, right? We still don't know what happened or don't have clarity in those cases. And uh, the prosecutor did say, um, or I should say, didn't say that they were going to open up those cases again, um, but may look into it. Uh, but I want to hear from you again. I could imagine, or really can't imagine, uh, but I know it had to have been quite a bit uh, going through your mind on that day. But amazingly, to have you come and testify that it was just another ordinary day that my wife and son and I were out just enjoying life. Not credible, not believable. You can convince yourself about it, but obviously you have the inability to convince anyone else about that. All right, and the last thing I really want to hit on is, is this case going to have any impact on the Delphi murders? Now, hear me out. You're thinking like these are two totally separate cases, have nothing to do with each other. But if you listen to the juror, he really talks about, you know, while Alec Murdaugh was on the stand, he was having crocodile tears, right? And all he was doing was blowing snot. So he did, wasn't really credible in the sense that he had remorse or that he was grieving the murder of his wife and child. But what really hits home, and I hope this hits home in the clip, is he thought that he was guilty based off of the videos at the dog kennels, right? Because he said that he admitted that that was his voice on tape. And that's all he had up until that point is that wasn't his voice. And he was surprised. Now, that is my interpretation of what the juror is saying. We're going to play the clip. You can tell me what the interpretation is for you, if I nailed it or if I didn't nail it. And we will go from there. But I think that this could have an impact on the Delphi cases if you're watching this and you're the defense team under no circumstances are you going to admit that that's your client that's on that tape. Well, the evidence was clear. He says it was this piece of video Baba. featuring Alex's voice at the crime scene moments before the murders that convinced him. Here's his voice clearly. And everybody else could too. Alec finally admitting it was him for the first time a year and a half after the murders. When he said it was him, were you surprised? I was very surprised. Why? That was his only savior right there. For some people, it's so hard to understand how a husband, especially a father, would kill their own son. What made you so sure that he had? His responses, how quick he was with the defense and his lies, steady lies. Did you feel like he was a liar? A good liar, but not good enough. Moyer, also not convinced by moments like this. <sighs> Alec appearing emotional on the stand. What did you think when Alec Murdoch took the stand? 
I didn't think much of them. Really? Really. I didn't see any true remorse or any compassion or anything. Even though he was, he, he cried a lot on the he, stand. He never cried. He never cried. What do you mean by that? All he did was blow snot. Did you not see tears? No tears. How did you know he wasn't crying? Because I saw his eyes. I was this close to him. All right, I'm going to leave you with this. So um, I do appreciate everybody coming out and supporting. We've had some really great videos in the past couple of weeks. We've uh, added on a lot of subscribers. I will be putting out a 100 subscriber video when we uh, surpass that, and we might surpass that in the next couple of days as this video will be coming out on Wednesday, and I typically record on the weekends. So uh, I will put out a video, and that'll be an off-cycle video. Um, I'm still kind of determining what I want to do with the stream, if I want to continue to stream or not continue to stream. It's really going to be based off you folks, if you like that or don't like that, and if you want to have a specific time. But for now, we're going to continue to do one video a week. Um, I do work full time. So if I do have a chance, I will try to do some extra videos. I do have a week coming or a week off coming up and uh, I do plan on doing one extra video during that time. Um, and I also appreciate the folks that are taking the time to go through the videos, listening for facts that we're getting wrong. Again, it's just me. So if I get something wrong, I'll be the first one to admit it or correct it. I do leave those videos up because they're a learning for me and I do appreciate that criticism. I think that constructive criticism is great for the channel. I will mention though, if it is a personal attack, I will take those comments down. Um, and I have had a few, not many, uh, but there is a few, I'd say for every 10 good ones, there's always one that wants to personally attack. I do take those comments down. Um, so if you want to reformulate those and, and, you know, come across that my video might not have, uh, hit everything perfectly. I'm great with that. Uh, I do get it wrong sometimes and I will look to uh, fix those. But on that note, I do appreciate you uh, coming in and uh, taking the time to watch these videos. So I'm your host, Tim Salberg. I hope everybody has a phenomenal week this week and I look forward to uh, seeing you on the next video.